Hello and welcome to Long Beach Lens. I'm your host, Derek J. Simpson, Executive Director of the Long Beach Community Action Partnership. Our first guest is the President of the West Region of Frontier Communication. Please welcome Melinda White. Thank you for Thank joining you. us, Melinda. Thank you for allowing us to come and visit with you sure, today. Sure, Lots has been said about Frontier and you being a new uh, corporate partner in Long Beach, but for those who don't know who Frontier is, can you sort of give us a snapshot about the comp corporation? Sure. Frontier Communications is the fourth largest local exchange carrier, so we provide wow. voice, video, and data across 29 states. And uh, we have recently entered the Southern California markets and also new areas in Northern California mm -hmm. as part of the acquisition of the Verizon wireline business. Mm -hmm. And that's voice, video, data, including the Fios uh, network and products uh, across three states, California, Texas, and Florida. So you're, you're not new in the business, you're just new to California. That's right. Many people like myself didn't really know much about Frontier until I had the pleasure of meeting you uh, the last part of uh, 2015. So if you go from that level, knowing how big you are as a corporation, how long have you been with Frontier? I've been with Frontier Communications 11 plus years. Okay. Uh, and it has been a, an exciting time uh, with the company as we've grown as we've expanded our product portfolio, as we have entered into the Fios operation, as we currently operate Fios up in a, a couple of our markets in the Northwest, or a couple of our states, I should say. And uh, it's, a, it's a very strong company, uh, and it's been very good. Now, your territory that you're specifically responsible for is not just California, as you said, it's several states, but you're actually based here in Southern California, correct? I am. I'm the president of the West Region. That okay. includes California, Washington, and Oregon. And I'm based in Southern California. I've lived in California for 23 years. Okay. And I've been in the LA area for about eight and a half years. So you know the challenges of, of this market in, in many ways? And I know the challenges and I know the opportunities. Right. 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 Which uh, are always hand in hand, mm -hmm. yes, for sure. So one of the things I was reading when I uh, did research and tried to learn more about Frontier was uh, a quote that said, you want to be a, a robust, reliable communication service provider. How do you go about accomplishing that as the leader of the West region? Our number one focus is the customer. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you keep your focus on the customer and all that you do, then your products, your network, your processes, your systems, then that all becomes a part of a very robust support system that allows you to provide and to meet uh, to the customer's expectation. Mm -hmm. And speaking of that, I know you take that very seriously because as we were preparing for the show, you mentioned that you've even come up with a, a Let Melinda Know uh, email address. Why was that? So let Melinda know at ftr.com right. is a way for customers in California to reach out locally. Okay. And as part of the acquisition, you can imagine we included about 5,000 new team members that right. came over from Verizon. Okay. And over the past 30 days, we've been training uh, many of the team members and mm -hmm. including those who typically would take calls from customers. Mm -hmm. And what we found is over the last 30 days at times, well, many times to be honest, there have been difficulty in customers being able to get through the 800 number. Mm -hmm. So we set up a local channel, uh, let Melinda know at ftr.com. And that's allowed many customers to reach out to actually receive a response in hours. And uh, we are able to resolve, respond and resolve to the issues and concerns. Now, how long has that been in effect? It's been in place uh, for about two and a half weeks at okay. this point. And do you find that since there, that's been in place, there's a market difference between what was occurring and satisfaction since then? Well, for about, I don't know, 500 customers over mm -hmm. the last two and a half weeks who've reached out to us about conversion-related mm -hmm. uh, questions and concerns, we've been able to respond immediately. So mm -hmm. I would say that that's a, it's been successful. Great. And uh, we will continue to keep that channel open. It's staffed 24 by 7. Right. And those uh, questions and concerns come directly to the local teams. So f I, I was involved in at least one major merger in my career, and that was Bank of America and Security Pacific. And I know that that was 
a monumental task, mm -hmm. you know, from technology to people to logistics, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, when you think about your transition, uh, I got to believe that that was just a, a huge task too, but you guys were very prepared for that. Well, we did our best to prepare, yeah. and it's true that uh, the California, Texas, Florida transaction, it is the largest flash cutover, which means we cut over all processes and systems and products and people and mm -hmm. all of that in one fell swoop. So wow. it's the largest flash cutover that's ever happened in the telecom business. Wow. And with that, yes, there were gaps and there were mm -hmm. challenges, and there still are. Mm -hmm. And our focus is to address those as quickly as possible. Uh, some of the product gaps we've been able to resolve uh, quickly. And uh, we still have customers out there who we are working with. And it remains our, our focus to ensure satisfaction throughout our footprint. Now, when you think about um, coming into a community such as Long Beach, I know we've had other major corporations, uh, fortunately, as a city coming into town. Mm -hmm. What do you want people to know about Frontier beyond just being that new service provider, mm -hmm. but in terms of the corporate culture and what yep. you want as president? Well, I mentioned that customer is number one, and in fact, that's one reason I joined the company over 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. I saw Frontier as an organization where uh, we put uh, processes and systems and we put behaviors and leadership uh, mm -hmm. behind that commitment to keep the customer as the priority. Mm -hmm. uh, when I joined Frontier 11 and a half years ago, my first boss was Dan McCarthy. Dan today is the CEO and the president of Frontier. And what I loved about working for Dan 11 years ago was I never had to wonder whether or not he understood the value of the customer. Mm -hmm. And that is permeated throughout the organization and we keep that top of mind. So as we continue through this transition and ensure that we are addressing and resolving as quickly as possible, it leads us to who we are in the community. Right. One of the differentiators about Frontier Communications is we actually put local decision makers, local leaders in each market mm -hmm. because we want to have the folks as close to the customer as possible who are making the difference for the customer. We also believe very strongly in what we call community engagement. Right. That's how I met you. Right. We right. identify organizations and we identify leaders throughout the community where we should be partners, where we can work together to improve and to bring uh, benefit to the community. That's very important to us. Now, when you mentioned local representation, uh, I know I was talking with uh, one of your staff and we were talking about the previous uh, Verizon liaison who mm -hmm. was like the face of that company locally mm -hmm. here. As a community for those who are watching, who might be that name? Because I know you have a broad responsibility, but who would be our local contacts? Is that person in place now? Well, there are local leaders in mm -hmm. place today. Mm -hmm. And by the way, there is no one face of Frontier. <laughs> okay. There are almost 5,000 faces of okay. Frontier. Some are in training, some yeah. are already out serving the customer. And most of them, of course, came over from uh, Verizon as part of the acquisition. Okay. And what I've seen in the last 30 days, it is a phenomenal team. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of the leaders who came over as part of the acquisition and also very I'm uh, proud of all the team members. So you'll have many faces of Frontier. Okay. And you mentioned community engagement. So mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the ways that uh, that 5,000 faces mm -hmm. uh, might be engaged in the community, whether it be from a nonprofit pr uh, perspective or in volunteering? I know many corporations have those types of initiatives as well. What might we expect in, in regards to Frontier in the community? We ask all of our team members to participate and lead throughout the community. Okay. And that can look like participation in various organizations and various events and activities. One of the uh, initiatives that we keep our eye on is where we participate as a company, we ensure that it benefits our customer, residential and consumer. That is a key uh, area of focus that allows us to ensure that we're spending our time, resources, and our money wisely. Now, I know also when I was reading certain information that you also have internship programs as well, we right? Do. Can you tell us a bit about that? Absolutely. We have had a very strong internship program actually across the company. Mm -hmm. And in the West region, it is uh, very visible. 
and we have training programs. We hire uh, interns who are in college age group, okay. uh, sometimes high school, depending upon the functional area. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, we've hired those interns once they graduate from their school. Well, speaking of hiring, then, I know that you've transitioned certain existing uh, Verizon employees over. Uh, is there a significant hiring going on in this market as well? We are hiring. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hiring in uh, many areas. Uh, as we continue to train and get our uh, contact center reps and our uh, commercial sales and our collections representatives, et cetera, uh, into the stream of interacting with customers, then we, at the same time, will identify opportunities and roles where we will be hiring locally. Part of our commitment uh, coming into the rest of California, and by the way, I should clarify, we actually operated for many years up in the northern part of California, small footprint. Uh -huh. uh, but part of our commitment uh, as the, tied to this trans transaction is to hire within California. That's always good, especially we're big on hiring Long Beach, so we, we yes. certainly appreciate that. We only have less than two minutes left, mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted to ask you if there were any closing thoughts that you would like to share from the standpoint of Frontier in terms of being a community partner, that being that Long Beach is your largest mm -hmm. single market, as I think you mentioned, in the state uh, that you would like to share? Absolutely. So Long Beach is our largest market in the mm -hmm. state, and today we employ about 350 employees here located in various locations. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a great example of as we think locally and as we put our uh, focus around community engagement where there are many organizations and many activities and opportunities in Long Beach where we can partner with the city, with you, with other nonprofits, with organizations, and also partner with other corporations to put our heads and our resources together and our funds together and make a better place. Well, I, I appreciate you taking the, the opportunity to come in and speak with us. You certainly enlightened me even more than what we had already uh, talked about. Uh, wish you the best of luck. Thank and, you, Derek. Uh, thank you for setting up that special email so yes. that people who need help can really get that and yes. express to you what their concerns might be. We look forward to having you back in the future as well. I look forward to it. Great. Thank you, Derek. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we will be speaking with Alexandra Torres of Women in Non-Traditional Employment Roles. Stay tuned for more of the Long Beach Land. Artful Thinking is a Long Beach-based nonprofit founded in 2010 to create artful events that educate the public about HIV and breast cancer while raising funds to support those services. Since then, we have brought Long Beach two successful comedy nights with Paula Poundstone and the monthly film series Out at the Movies, which featured appearances by Lily Tomlin as well as others. Beneficiaries include the Woman to Woman campaign in Long Beach, the Christina Applegate Foundation, St. Mary's Hospital's Care Program, the AIDS Assistance Foundation, the AIDS Food Store. Contact us at info at artfulthinking.org. Thank you. Are you tired of the run-of-the-mill duties at your internship? Getting coffee, making copies, getting prescriptions for people you don't even know? Well, not at PadNet. We're making things happen. We're getting footage. We're making PSAs. We're getting interviews with people you're gonna know. But I don't know how to do these things. No problem. We have workshops, equipment, Hardware, software, underwear, all for you to learn and absorb. Check us out at padnet.tv for more information. Welcome back. I'm your host, Derek J. Simpson. Our second guest is the Executive Director of Women in Non-Traditional Employment Roles, or WINTER for short. She is here to tell us more about the Rosie the Riveter and Youth Bill programs. Please welcome Alexandra Torres. Hi, Alex. Hi, how are you? It's great to see you Thank on you the set much. as opposed to working in the community as you <laughs> and I do. Thank you for the invitation. Sure, sure. So for those who are not aware of what winter is other than a season in the year, tell us specifically, what does winter do? 
So Women in Non-Tradition Employment Roles is a nonprofit organization that serves women and youth. Mm -hmm. And we do that by training them in construction and building trades and in MC3 using the MC3 curriculum, which is the trace curriculum. Mm -hmm. And we have two different programs. We have an adult program, which is our women only. And they go through a boot camp. And then if they are qualified for a program, they'll take a 10-week training in construction and building trades. And then we place them with the construction and building trades uh, registered apprenticeships or union jobs. What happens in a boot camp? Uh, a lot of exercises. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's, okay. it's a boot camp. We need to ensure that women who apply in our program are physically fit to do the work that is required in uh -huh. a construction and building uh, trade site. Right. We actually do not place women to work in houses or building houses. We place women in working, for example, at the bridge that is being constructed here in Long Beach or at the port or oh, wow. at okay. the metro tunnels so they have to be physically fit so it's a lot of a lot of that happening okay. there that boot camp so with just that little snapshot then it's a holistic approach right you're academically getting them prepared and skills wise but also health wise and otherwise absolutely we actually do mathematics every morning they have yeah. to pass a test uh, english and math test in, in order for them to qualify for our program and then we work with them every single day for those 10 weeks doing uh, math uh, and interview processes and the, you know the the curriculum has all of the traits it's a multi-trade curriculum mm -hmm. but also they do exercise every single morning now what is rosie the riveter rosie the riveter is a youth program it's our youth program including the youth field program okay. and a high school program that we have that we provide with a partner called youth field charter school of southern california and they, we provide the same thing, but it's a longer period because they're younger uh, folks and they're youth. Out of, we target out of school youth. So we uh, recapture them and we provide a high school diploma with construction and building trades. Uh, and, and, and the leadership and it has uh, case management and help and also placement at the end of the, that year or two years that they are with us. Uh, again, with the trace and, chemo chem and, and petrochemical jobs. Wow. Where would you typically find students or women in the, in the adult program or in the youth program? Where typically do you the, find them? The adult program, we uh, do a lot of outreach. We work with other nonprofit organizations that provide uh, women services, okay. uh, be in rehab programs. Uh, we even work with uh, the Twin Towers and, and domain, domestic violence shelter and shelters and every mm -hmm. place, uh, WIC program, the welfare department, mm -hmm. EDD, whatever we can find women, we go and we present and to get them to go to one of our informational sessions. So you must have quite a team then covering all those bases to get youth and adults yeah, it's, in. It's small but, but very lean and very active. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you are the executive director? I'm the executive director. Okay. Tell us about that role and how long you've been with Winter. I've been with Winter for the last 15 years, uh, but I've been running nonprofits for about 27 okay. uh, or 26 years. Uh, and my background was in violence prevention, so I used to run rape crisis centers and domestic violence shelters until I came to, to Winter. We have been talking or have at that point had this conversation for about 10 years of self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. And then Winter presented itself to me and I said, oh, so that's, that's, that's this is how uh, we can do it. This is how we can match, create right? yeah. wealth and self-sufficiency in women's lives. Okay. Now, your locations, are you, I know you have a presence here in Long Beach, I believe, as well as San Pedro, is that correct? We actually have, uh, Winter started in Long Beach. Okay. And then we had moved and expanded our services. So we have a site here in Long Beach. We have a site in San Pedro. We have a site by USC area, and then we have a site in East Los Angeles. So if someone's interested, either personally or they know someone who might be a good candidate, would it be best for them to go to one of those sites, or would they go online? How would you suggest? We have orientations or informational sessions every single Friday in every single site. Oh, okay. So whoever is interested in our program, they can go, if they're interested in our program and they live in Long Beach, they can go to the Long Beach site. If they live in Wilmington, San Pedro, they can go to that site. If they're, if they're you know, central, they go to that site. So in the three sites, we have informational sessions every Friday at 10. And for those who live in Long Beach, then the question the address, would be, The address yeah. is 690 <laughs> Studebaker Road, right, but where the power plant is. Right, and so it's, it's sort of, 
uh, everyone can see the power plant because you can see the, the smokestacks, for lack of a better term, right. <laughs> from the freeway and all over Long Beach. But right. you guys are literally like right as you go in that driveway. Right to the in the left, front, huh? exactly. Yeah. Before even you go into the power plant, that's right. where we have our Long Beach site. Okay, so you can't miss that. So one of the things I read was that you're the only non-traditional employment organization for women and youth. Uh, I'm sure you can't do it all, but when you hear that, what do you think needs to happen to make you more successful, but to also capture all those women and youth that you can't necessarily serve yourselves? Um, we are the only one, actually, that does train women in non-traditional careers, mm -hmm. and I think we have to expand our services. Right now, we're looking in Pomona, for example. Mm -hmm. But also, I think that people need to change the way they do training for women. Uh, it, it, they're very good jobs, so people always talk about how great those jobs are, how you know better salaries you can make. But I think they need to change the way they train people so they can understand also how hard it is so they can make them successful. Yeah. Now, you also talked about uh, reinforcing the gender equity gap. And I know we hear about that on social media and in the media, but when you hear that at winter, what does that mean to you guys there? Uh, for, for us, it means a lot of uh, advocacy work. We work with uh, the union apprenticeships, for example, and we've been doing that for the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. But we also need to work with the contractors. So whoever applies for those contracts with cities or Metro or anybody else, LAX, we want to be able to work with them in order for them to understand and provide a safe environment for women to work in those non-traditional careers. But it takes a lot of uh, advocacy mm -hmm. work. And I know I also read that 80% of women in the workforce continue to occupy low wages and yes. low status and traditionally female positions. So how is Winter, yes. you know, working to help address that as well? Well, we do a lot of community education. I think the yeah. number one barrier in our community of women community, especially young women, single mothers, is that they really don't know that these jobs exist. Mm -hmm. So that's the number one barrier for us. So we do go a lot into the community to talk and we send people to talk to the women where the women are uh, gather and we do presentations in, in order to give them that information. How do we go about changing this, Alex, on a grander scale? I mean, I know you're working with equity and and get, making more women available to, you know, livable wage jobs and great jobs, yeah. but this is a bigger issue in society. Given that you're in the trenches working on this every day, what are some of your ideas if you were in charge and could wave a wand? What would you like to see happen? I think it will present more women in those in, in, in the media, for example, right. and, and we will I will present more women working mm -hmm. in those fields because the more you see people doing people that look like you, not right. just people who don't look like you, that, mm -hmm. but you people that look like you, women that look like them, African American and, and Latina women and Asian mm -hmm. women working in those fields, then we will have more women saying, "Oh, so I can do that too." Right. So that's one of the things that we always uh, encourage our partners is to have their their projects and their recruitment efforts have women pictures of working, not just women, but women that are actually working in those fields. Doing the jobs, yes. Mm -hmm. And and I didn't maybe ask earlier, but who's a typical student of winter and from a, both a, a female a youth perspective and an adult perspective? I mean. Is it just out of school youth, or maybe it's somebody who's in school that says, hey, I want to go work on a bridge like that? I mean, For our youth program, it is, uh, it's a mix of students. Okay. So some students, uh, for whatever reason, had a drop out of school. Uh, some of them had been pushed out of school because they're already 18 or 19 right. years old. Right. Uh, for the adult program, is very high-risk populations that we serve. So with the adult program, is women with incarceration background, of um, substance abuse background, or they have never had a, a job, displaced mm -hmm. workers, mm -hmm. that's the population that we serve. So they're, they're coming from a deficit-based place in some cases, and you're helping them reach that positive place where they can really do better for themselves and their families. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's an amazing uh, cause that you, you Th have. These careers are the other college that nobody talks about. Right. The, the trades will pay for three to four years schooling for you so you can become journey, a journeyman yeah. and for free. So oh. it, it is a fantastic career. You can go from making $27 an hour as an operating engineer to making 135000 a year. Wow. And 
that is a good living. Uh, I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think about this. So, <laughs> Alex, um, the jobs that, that you talk about, and when you mention union, I mean, I hear people say you have to be born into the union, but how realistic is it that the, the young ladies and, and the, the uh, youth that go through winter, uh, for them to believe that they will ultimately be able to get into the union? Is it as impossible as some people paint it to be, or is it, uh, is it just it not is that not way? possible. It, it is not impossible. Nepotism is something that happened many mm -hmm. years ago, but mm -hmm. it's more and more uh, that the baby boomers are retiring, including myself. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's changing, it, and it's changing the way they see new, new generations coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, in our case, women can be placed in an apprenticeship right after mm -hmm. the 11th week. Or in some cases, uh, like I have, say, Maria, who came from incarceration background to our program. I think, you know, like on Monday, she started our program after leaving that situation and, and a Thursday. And she, she, didn't, she didn't complete our program because she was picked up by one of the union guys and said, I want to hire her because we take them to the, to the apprenticeships. Okay. And the apprenticeship coordinators will do activities with them. She was hired from there. So six weeks, I think she was with us, and then she was hired as an iron worker. Wow. She's been an iron worker since then. Wow. So it all depends in, in, in the women. And one of the reasons we have the boot camp is to demonstrate that we need, they need to work really, really hard, and they need to prove themselves uh, for our program in order for us to be able to say, take Maria. She'll be good for you. Alex, we're out of time, but I really want to thank you for taking the time to come in and, and share with us about winter. I know you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're a great leader, and you guys do great work. So keep it up and keep us as a partner as well. Uh, that concludes our show. I'd like to thank Melinda White and Alexandra Torres for joining us today. Be sure to follow PadNet TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for the latest updates. We also welcome your comments and thoughts regarding this show as we strive to make Long Beach Lens a favorite source of local news, information, and entertainment. This show has been brought to you with support from the Long Beach Community Action Partnership. Thank you for watching Long Beach Lens.